I y'all know I was a dog sniffing out the best graphics card deals around and this is what I turned up with. Hey yo, why is it pink? Shh. And why are there flowers on it? We don't talk about that. But you can go and find this card for $140 right now and i can guarantee you are going to be surprised with how much this gpu you can go toe to toe with a lot of the competition that is out there so let's check it out in a few games first first up we got a plague tale requiem wait 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 like, how rude of me like there's so much stuff going on the screen here i feel like i should explain it before we go any deeper at the top of the screen you can look across and see the performance of all three graphics cards. In the middle, we have the RX 6700, a 10 gigabyte GPU that goes for about $280 brand new right now. Then on the right, we have the Intel Arc A770 16 gigabyte model. This card on sale goes for about $320. Also notice next to the graphics card names, you see a percentage point. That percentage is how much faster or slower in some cases these cards are versus our up and comer $140 GPU. And the keen eye amongst you saw that I put black boxes over it. You don't get the spoiler to see what this graphics card is yet. So if you want to play a little game, I challenge you before I reveal what this graphics card is, if you can guess it below. Okay, back to Plague Tale. 1440p on the ultra quality scaling mode, high setting. We can see that our big dogs here are only ahead by 8% and 14%, which is noticeable in gameplay, but not that significant in the grand scheme of things. And if we bump on the quality scaling mode, we can see that we get almost a 60 FPS experience on our little guy card. Now let's look at a Last of Us Part 1, and this is an interesting case, and the reason I teased it a little bit earlier is because obviously the A770 from Intel here, this is not its strong suit. It gets beat by our $140 graphics card, but the 6700 pulls way far ahead, 36%, that's crazy. And I feel like I'm sitting here telling you that Santa Claus isn't real or something, but at $140, th this card isn't magic. It does only have eight gigabytes of VRAM, which can hold it back in certain very VRAM heavy games. Check it out Resident Evil 4 at 1440p native on the balanced preset. This is more of a typical case for these comparisons, 10% faster on average. Just to point out the raw power of this card as well, at 1440p, it is getting over a 60 FPS experience. And if you wanna bump it up to high settings, AKA prioritize the graphics in this game, you can look at still a 60 FPS experience. But how would this card hold up an Unreal Engine 5 using Lumen? So I went into Fortnite and tested this out on high settings. At least at 1440p, we are not getting a 60 FPS experience on any of these graphics cards, which does suck. Cyberpunk, 1440p, high settings. Both the 6700 and A770 seem to be pulling further ahead in this game. I think this is also because of VRAM. If you turn it to FSR quality, you get nearly a 60 FPS experience on this little guy graphics card. And I think that is very playable. I do have more benchmarks and I could go in more in depth on them, but I think this gives you an idea of how this card performs against this competition. Yes, there are probably other cards that would compare more closely, maybe more accurately, but I don't own them, so it is what it is. Overall though, it's clear this card is even capable at 1440p. And the average 10 to 20% leads you get on these other cards definitely doesn't make up for the 100 or so percent price increase. I know the curiosity is boiling at this point in time. What is behind this dazzling pink mask? It is no other than AMD's 5700 XT. If any of you guys know the deep running lore on the VEX YouTube channel, then you know back in May when I picked out the best GPUs for your money, I actually recommended this card at the $140 price point. I know here and that's the 5700 XT is probably running through your guys' head. Ah, it's used. Yes, you're going to have to buy this on the used market. Say eBay, for example, you can easily find these things for about $140 to $150. Even though this is a used graphics card, it's actually not as old as you might think. This came out in July of 2019, which just makes it four years old at this point in time. This will be getting driver updates for years to come. Although understandably, that might put a lot of you guys off. But when you put into perspective how many people are still holding to like 1080 Ti's, and the 1080 Ti came out in March of 2017, which makes this card over six years old. But other than the driver update side of things, 
Really, what are the disadvantages to getting an older GPU in general? The first one, don't expect to be getting ray tracing. However, if you take a look over at the 6700 and the A770, which costs significantly more, yes, they have the ability to ray trace, but I don't think either of these cards have good enough ray tracing performance to make them usable. So overall, you can spin it like this. It could be a benefit on the 5700 XT to not have ray tracing at all because at least you're not wasting money on a feature that's basically pointless. Another downside could definitely be power consumption. And definitely seeing two eight pin connectors, which rates this card of drawing up to 375 watts. This is definitely a scary thing, okay? However, I will give you some peace of mind, okay? It's not as scary as you would think. As in many games that I played, this card only drew around 190 watts in total, compared to the 6700, which drew about 150 watts most of the time. But one really cool advantage that you get with a 5700 XT, even though it's older, you still get to use AMD's Adrenaline software, and that gives you the power to do a little tinkering with how this card behaves and you can make this card way more efficient than it ever started as. So AMD software Adrenaline makes it super easy to do this cool thing called undervolting. But what is undervolting? Well, to put it in simple terms, an ideal way you want to basically make your card draw less power but still give the same amount of performance. Using Adrenaline, I dialed in a quick undervolt of about 1.0 volts and with a clock speed of 1900 megahertz. And just a disclaimer, this isn't going to be true for every single card. And that's why I recommend going to YouTube and checking out some other tutorials to be in more in depth than what I'm talking about in this video in particular. But for me, this resulted in the card only drawing 150 watts all the way from 190 watts before. That is almost a 25% reduction in power. And if you check out the performance between the, the stock settings versus the undervolt, you only lose up to 5% performance. So in my book, that's a huge win. And when your card uses less power, it also generates less heat, which means your fans don't have to run as fast. <laughs> like, why does it make that noise? but I was able to get it to draw almost the same power as the 6700. And that's exactly why undervolting on older graphics cards with their less efficient architectures is such a cool thing to be able to do. The last thing I bet you're wondering is how does an older graphics card perform with productivity tasks? So not just gaming. From my experience, editing on it has been completely smooth. I have no complaints whatsoever. Same with recording footage. Looks good, it's smooth. I'm completely happy with it. The only downside to getting an older graphics card is you are not going to be getting an AV1 encoder. In fact, you don't get an AV1 decoder either. I mostly only use the encoders on the GPU, but for other productivity, say like Blender or AI or something like that, I would think that the 5700 XT would perform worse in those because it doesn't have AI accelerators and it doesn't have ray tracing cores for Blender or things like that. But for video editing, it has been awesome for me. The last disadvantage we've got to talk about is the 5700 XT's VRAM. Obviously, eight gigabytes has been a scary thing for a lot of people. If you are playing the latest games, they're going to eat up eight gigabytes of VRAM even at 1080p. But mind you, you gotta put it into perspective. This card only costs $140 and the competition around it, especially in the new market, you've gotta pay a significant amount more for more than eight gigabytes of VRAM. Even though eight gigabytes does kind of suck, it's uh, in some games that I even tested, it does run into issues with it. If you play at 1440p, especially at 1080p, and if you use scaling modes, usually it's okay, but not all the time, and it isn't gonna age super well. On the bright side though, this VRAM is on a 256-bit bus, which can't be said for all graphics cards, huh? Yeah. So the performance of this $140 graphics card is extremely good and it has a decent feature set, but it does still have its downsides. Now, a lot of people, it just being an AMD graphics card is gonna say, oh no, I, I can't buy that, that's the devil. I've never touched something like that. But like, if you need Nvidia for whatever you're doing, say you need CUDA acceleration or you need DLSS or something like that, AMD isn't gonna work for you. There are some alternatives that you can get 1080 Ti. Yes, it's going to cost more, but it does solve the VRAM problem that's on the 5700 XT. Although as well, the 1080 Ti does perform a little bit faster than the 5700 XT. 
So if you do want to pay more, you get what you pay for. Obviously, it has the disadvantage of being older. It's going to get less driver support over time, and you still don't get that DLSS or ray tracing on this graphics card. The next best option, though, on the used market, I would say, is the RTX 2070. This is going to give you DLSS, and technically, you're going to get ray tracing support. It comes in a little bit cheaper than the 1080 Ti, so that's good to have. And DLSS is, from what I've found, the superior upscaling technology it's untouchable when it comes down to it also the 2070 also has eight gigabytes of vram compared to the 57 on an xd you aren't solving the vram problem like you would on the 1080 ti and to put it in perspective this 2070 performs about the same as the 5700 xt yet it costs significantly more on the used market so you are paying to get nvidia you are paying for the dlss but if you really need nvidia then the 2070 is probably your best option on the used market. But in terms of raw performance, the 5700 XT is the best bang for your buck at $140. It just, it's hard to recommend anything else if you want to game. Then everything below the 5700 XT, I don't think at offers nearly as much value as that card does. Everything above it has dim diminishing returns and you're more paying for features than you're paying for performance, in my opinion. And make sure just to be careful buying used parts, guys. Vet the seller message them ask them what the, the card was used for before you need to be an annoying piece of shit because you don't want to get a broken card on arrival make sure you purchase everything through a reputable marketplace like ebay or facebook because on those platforms you can get seller protection and i've actually had to return things before and it works completely well but i do highly recommend this card for its value and i bet you're wondering why did i get the pink one I wanted to get this video on the 5700 XT out a lot earlier, but I realized the way that I was benchmarking my graphics cards was flawed. Every other video that I've done with benchmarks before, I would just take them with a grain of salt because the 1% lows are probably a little messed up and the average performance is actually higher now that I've refined the way that I do my testing. That, that all my testing was messed up is because I was recording gameplay with OBS, like I am recording myself with right now. And using OBS, it actually, I didn't realize it took a lot more of a performance hit than I thought. And it also caused micro stutters in games that you could feel and it would show up on the, the frame time graph. So 1% low performance should be how it actually is now. So instead of using OBS, I switched over to using every GPU's na like native driver. This is kind of an extreme example in Last of Us, but I just wanna apologize for any benchmarks to, to be misleading, although they all were doing the same thing recording in OBS originally. So they're all at the same disadvantage technically. If you want any tips about benchmarking cards, unless you can record it externally, don't record with OBS. Just a just a nice tip or else you're going to be throwing out a lot of benchmark data. This is a spreadsheet that I ended up with for this video. And if you want to check this out, the link will be in the description. I had to redo all these. I had redid every single one of these benchmarks to get this graph that you're seeing here. So yeah, I had to throw out a lot of data and you live and you learn. It must be a canon event. All right, that's all I got for you guys though. Uh, maybe check out a 5700 XT if you're just getting into PC gaming or if you want an upgrade and your card is like really slow. It's a good thing to look at and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this, all the testing, all that good stuff. Y'all have a good one. Peace.